uh, my reactions are that the budget is quite reform oriented and focused for the infrastructure sector. There is an increased allocation of almost 35% for the infra spending, despite this being a pandemic year. And the finance minister has not imposed any new taxes on the common taxpayers and that's a quite a heartening step. Three key reform measures that the finance minister has announced for the infrastructure sector are as follows. One, setting up of a development financial institution. Now, a DFI has been making the rounds uh, among the experts and commentator commentators for a very long time as an alternative to bank financing to infrastructure projects because the banks have been saddled with huge amount of NPAs and they are not really in a position to lend the significant of amount for, for a longer, longer tenor to the infrastructure projects. Now, what will be interesting is that while DFI is in itself uh, is not a new idea and we have had DFIs in the past which have not necessarily yielded the desired result and had to be converted into banks. The, the key word and takeaway from the finance minister's speech is a professionally managed DFI. Now if this is translated into practice and the proposed DFI is truly a professionally managed entity, then that will be quite important for the outcome that the government has sought to achieve from this DFI because what kind of regulatory framework it is put to and what kind of governance framework it operates under, that will be very important to determine that it is not subjected to the, the routine uh, uh, pulls and pressures that a government-owned institution suffers from ordinarily and, and it should be allowed to make a professional uh, decisions in, in order to choose who, which kind of project it, it's lends, it lends to and, and under what conditions. So that's a very important step. Another, uh, another uh, reform measure that the government has announced is the creation of a bad bank to take over the NPAs of uh, banks which have lent to uh, private sector companies. Now we know that the banks have been constrained in their ability to lend to new projects or, or new borrowers or new investments because they are saddled with huge NPAs and stressed assets and therefore creation of a bad bank to take over these assets and manage these assets and dispose them off in a, in a uh, in a certain time frame, that's an important step because this will unlock the uh, lending potential of the banks and it will allow them to lend to newer projects and to entrepreneurs which can then help in creation of jobs for the growth of the economy. The third important announcement made by the Prime Minister in, in infrastructure sector is the creation of a, of a permanent institutional framework to, to buy corporate bonds for both normal and stressed assets. Now this is a very important announcement for the simple reason that the corporate bond market in India is not very deep as we know and the creation of an institutional framework supported by the government to buy corporate bonds would help in deepening the bond market and allowing more capital to be raised to fund infrastructure projects in the long term and it will be a complementary step for the DFI that the government has proposed to set up because then it will open up two important avenues of capital for funding the very large amount of capital that is needed to set up the 7,400 on infrastructure projects over the next five or six years. There, there are a few uh, uh, missed opportunities one can say. For example, uh, you know, one could have thought of uh, setting up dedicated tribunals, for example, for other infrastructure sectors for, uh, similar to what is available currently in the electricity sector. Uh, there is there is no such uh, announcement announcement by the minister, but uh, uh, but introduction of a mandatory conciliation mechanism to uh, to resolve disputes in the infrastructure sector is is a good forward step, uh, and and one would hope that th that is that is followed up by a mandatory uh, tribunal for uh, for other infrastructure sectors to 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 follow up on what the what the CEA called the ex post facto. Uh, resolution mechanism and the other important aspect in the infrastructure part is the announcement to uh, provide liquidity support in a revamped mechanism to the distribution companies and also allow choice to the consumers to choose among more than uh, one distribution companies. Now this will bring in competition and efficiency and hopefully also lower the cost for the consumers. This has also been a long talked about idea. But we have, had, we have had power distribution sector which is almost a natural monopoly and bringing competition to this sector will, will really unlock the potential of uh, distribution sector and, and bring in more investments and, and benefit the consumers. 
So these are the key important takeaways from the finance minister's speech as far as the infrastructure sector is concerned. And overall, it's quite a quite a bold and reform oriented budget for the infrastructure sector without any additional burden. And we hope that the implementation is is really the key, and that will be the uh, that will be the real uh, test for how much of this is translated into the action or the outcome from this budget.